warning. The unprecedented cyber attack which crippled the NHS is escalating and could spread further from tomorrow. Predictions of a Monday meltdown as tens of thousands of computers are switched on. Also on the programme. Nurses threaten a summer of protest as they say safety is at risk because there aren't enough of them. And after more than a century of football, Tottenham say goodbye to White Hart Lane. This is ITV News with Andrea Byrne. Good evening. Top cybersecurity experts are warning tonight that the global computer virus which hit the NHS could escalate this week. Warnings have gone out to staff at several affected hospitals not to switch on internet devices until they get the all clear. Tonight, seven trusts in England are diverting A&D patients. With an estimated 200,000 victims in 150 countries, this is already the biggest ever attack of its kind. Richard Pallow has the latest. We still don't know who's behind it, but its extent is becoming more and more apparent. 200,000 plus victims and counting. And as the world prepares for a new working week, a stark warning from the head of Europe's crime fighting agency. How concerned should we be about what happens tomorrow morning? We've seen uh, the extent to which the ransomware, which had its infection rate slow down over the weekend, now mutated by the cyber crime groups behind. So a new strain of it is running which means that I think if companies haven't patched the problem, by the time uh, their, their people come to work on Monday morning, I think we could see the rates of infection going up again quite markedly. Within the badly hit NHS, the concern is tangible. A warning to staff in Northumbria could not be clearer. Similarly, those working for United Lincolnshire Hospitals have been explicitly told not to use their computer equipment until instructed to do so. It means all non-emergency operations and appointments have already been cancelled here for tomorrow and it's unclear when they might start again. The nurses are taking a more time over things because they're having to do everything by hand. Obviously they're, they're, having, they're struggling a little bit but they've been really good, the staff have been amazing. Yet the worldwide disruption would have been far worse had it not been for this British 22-year-old. He stopped the original virus from spreading from his computer in his own bedroom. And as he told me, he'd informed the FBI of how basic the actual coding was. How intelligent a piece of programming was this? Because it's not a professional code, I actually think that this might be an amateur group who haven't done anything like this before. The attackers themselves who already have this working code, it's a matter of changing a few lines. The National Cyber Security Council has reiterated that new machines and networks in the UK may have been compromised without being detected. How the Far East and Asia are affected in the next few hours may give an indication of what British systems face tomorrow. Richard Pallow, ITV News. Well, I'm joined now by our political correspondent, Carl Din. And Carl, how are the major parties reacting to these developments then? Well, the arguments are still going on about why the affected NHS trusts weren't properly protected against this. Money may have played a part. Uh, and today, Labour and the Conservatives were trading blows over funding for cyber security. So here's what they both had to say, starting with the Defence Secretary, Sir Michael Fallon. We're spending around £50 million pounds on the NHS uh, cyber systems to improve their security. We have encouraged the NHS trusts to reduce their exposure to the weakest system, the Windows XP. A Labour government will put £10 billion into the infrastructure needs of the NHS and a big priority of that will, be go will go to investing in cyber security and upgrading our IT. So this is already feeding through into the wider debate about the government stewardship of the NHS. We know there are already plenty of problems there. And I think that debate will continue to heat up going into this week. Carl, thank you very much. The main nurses union warned today the safety of patients is at risk because hospital wards are so short of staff. The Royal College of Nursing claims 40,000 posts currently lie vacant in England. It's demanding safe staffing levels should be put into law, as Rebecca Barry reports. Hello, Betty. Hello. Hello. It's Emma, the consultant nurse for the ward. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. How's the Emma's been a nurse for 12 up? years and is now a consultant nurse, a highly qualified position. But there aren't enough like her. The NHS in England is struggling to recruit nurses with a record number of vacancies. 
saddens me that it's a high number um, because I, I love my job and I think it's the, you know, possibly the best job in the world. I'm passionate about what I do. Um, part of my role, I think, it's being enthusiastic about nursing and, and showing other nurses that there are the different career paths towards the traditional nursing career paths that used to be. Research by the Royal College of Nursing suggests there are more than 40,000 vacancies for registered nurses in England. That's 11% of posts, a figure that's almost doubled since 2013. The Royal College of Nursing says unfair pay and increasing workloads is forcing too many nurses to leave the profession or simply not train at all. That's why they're calling for legislation to guarantee safe staffing levels. We haven't got enough nurses. Those nurses we have are being strangled by pay cuts in real terms and the consequence of that means it's very difficult to see how we're going to keep our patients safe and certainly have a very positive experience that all nurses who love their jobs want to provide. It comes as the union announced a summer of protests after a poll indicated support for a strike over pay. They work very terribly hard. I think they should get a lot more money than they're getting, definitely. The Conservatives say they're determined to ensure standards of safety continue to rise. Labour says it would legislate for safe staffing levels. I can't thank you all enough. For all Rebecca Barry, ITV News. Some of the day's other news for you now. There's been international condemnation of the latest ballistic missile test by North Korea. North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un was warned by President Trump's administration that the US will tighten the screws following the test. And the inauguration took place today of the new president of France, Emmanuel Macron. He was formally sworn into office at the Elysee Palace today, taking over from President Hollande. Sport now, and in football, Hull's relegation from the Premier League was sealed today when they lost at Crystal Palace. The 4-0 defeat at Wilfred Zaha with the pick of Palace's goals in many ways summed up a season of misery for Hull after their promotion to the top flight last year. Liverpool. Tottenham clinched the Premier League runners-up spot today, but today's match against Manchester United was about more than that. It was the last game before the club moves out of its historic White Hart Lane ground, while a new stadium is built nearby. Ian Payne reports on a day of memories as well as action at the lane. Maybe it was the warm sunshine, maybe the occasion, but there was a real buzz around White Hart Lane today. Fans had arrived three hours before kickoff from all parts of the globe. We've gone from Germany today. Driven the whole way? Yes. Uh, I came actually from Southern California, from Santa Monica. Former captains had been invited to the ground to be part of the farewell. Coming through the crowds on the way here today, it's like a carnival atmosphere. So I think everyone's coming today to, to celebrate. You know, the traditions, the history of Tottenham Hospital Football Club that have been created here at White Hart Lane. It's been their home since 1899, witnessing great triumphs like the league and FA Cup double in the 60s. <laughs> Tottenham's move is not as nostalgic as some. That's because they're not moving very far, because the new stadium is right next door to the old stadium. They'll play all their home matches at Wembley next season, and then in 15 months' time, they'll move into the 61,000-seater new stadium. It's costing around £800 million and will also host American football from the NFL and concerts. Today, only 36,000 could get a ticket, and they didn't have to wait long before the pre-game... Ian Payne, ITV News, at White Hart Lane. An historic day for Tottenham. Britain's Lewis Hamilton put his Formula One title challenge back on track today with a stunning win on the Spanish Grand Prix. Hamilton's Mercedes swept past the Ferrari of his rival Sebastian Vettel with two thirds of the race gone and held on till the chequered flag. The British driver is now just six points behind Vettel. And finally, if you ever wanted proof that the saying it's never too late isn't just a worn out cliche, well, here it is. At 101 years young, Burden Hayes from Devon today became the oldest person ever to complete a skydive. The D-Day veteran jumped from 15,000 feet with three generations of his family. Afterwards, he said he was over the moon, though you could say he'd uh, already done that bit. Marvellous stuff. And that's it for now. I'll be back with your late news for you at 10. Until then, goodbye.